Hey everybody, Mr. Troy here. I want to start with a disclaimer. What we're learning in this video is super important for the rest of math. We're going to spend a lot of time on it. If you don't get it, we'll stop, we'll go over it. But just so you know, what follows is extremely important. It's time for math with Mr. Troy. Okay. To understand factoring, we have to notice a pattern in multiplication. Now here's that pattern. When we multiply, since we're always following the same process, there's this predictable thing that always happens. Let's start with our firsts and our lasts. Our firsts are going to give us x squared, and our lasts are going to give us plus 6. The outers and the inners do something a little bit different. They stack. So the outers are plus 3x and the inners are plus 2x. My final answer for this multiplication problem would be x squared plus 5x plus 6. And those numbers totally matter and they totally mean something. To see how that works or to maybe catch the pattern, let's try the next one. Our firsts give us x squared. Our outers give us 7x. Our inners give us 2x. And our lasts give us 14. So this multiplies out to x squared plus 9x plus 14. I'm wondering if you see the pattern. So let's look at the first problem. We've got x plus 2 and x plus 3. What do you notice about the lasts? On our next problem, we have x plus 2 and x plus 7. What do you notice about the lasts? Now, it goes beyond just that. So, when you're looking at the outers and the inners, notice we have 2x and we have 3x. Well, what happens when we add those together? 2x plus 3x gives us 5x. In the next problem, we have 7x and 2x, and that gives us 9x. Pause the video for a second and see if you can put a name on what that pattern is. So the way that I describe this pattern is that the two numbers in the parentheses multiply to make the final number, and they add to make the middle coefficient. So for example, if I gave you x plus 10, times x plus 5, your answer would be x squared plus 15x, that's 5 plus 10, plus 50, 5 times 10. If I gave you x plus 3 times x minus 7, you would have x squared minus 4x, because that's seven, a negative 7 and positive 3, minus 21. We can use the area model to help both going forwards and going backwards. So remember the area model was writing out x plus 7, x minus 9, and then multiplying in these four quadrants or boxes. So x times x is x squared, x times positive 7 is plus 7x, and x times negative 9 is minus 9x, positive 7 times negative 9 is negative 63. So see how these two add together, those are the like terms, and we get x squared minus 2x minus 63. We're going to try the same thing, but we're going to try it in reverse. So to go in reverse, if I give you x squared 
plus 12x plus 20, you can say, okay, the x squared would have come from x times x. Now, I need this to be 20, and I need these two to add to 12. So the different ways that I can make 20 are 1 times 20, 2 times 10, and 4 times 5. You're going to want to keep a list as you do this for each problem. So if I try plus 1 plus 20, that would be 20x and 1x. And that doesn't add to 12. That adds to 21. So that's not the right pair. Make sure when you find the wrong answer, you cross it off so you don't accidentally write it again. So then let's try plus 2 and plus 10. That would make plus 10x and plus 2x. Oh, those do add to the 12 that I'm looking for. So my answer here is x plus 2 times x plus 10. What you want to have in the back of your head is that those two numbers multiply to 20 and add to make 12. Now, if you don't like the area model, here's what you do. You start by setting up parentheses. And for now, all of these are going to start with x and x. That's the easiest way to go. Write out the pairs of numbers that multiply to make 24. So 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, and 4 and 6. I always go in order for this first set of numbers. I'm looking, do any of those add to make 14? Well, this second set does. So I can write x plus 2 times x plus 12. If I need to check my answer, I just FOIL. You might be wondering, is this answer the same? And it absolutely is. It doesn't matter whether you have option 1 or option 2, those two mean the same thing. What's a real challenge here, though, is when the numbers get to be negative. Because 1 times 6 does not multiply to make negative 6. It could either be negative 1 times 6 or 1 times negative 6. It could be negative 2 times 3 or 2 times negative 3. All of a sudden, you've got twice as many options. For this particular one, these are all of the numbers that multiply to make negative 6. Now, do any of those pairs add to make positive 5? Well, x minus 1 and x plus 6 do add to make positive 5. So that would be your answer for that problem. There's a question on Khan Academy like this where they give you a length and they ask you to find a width. So what they're telling you is that if you want to factor or break apart this trinomial, one of the binomials is going to be x plus 2. This makes it a little bit easier because you can say, well, my lasts would give me negative 12. 2 times what makes negative 12 must be negative 6. So this, x minus 6, would be our width. All right, I hope that helps. This is a really tough topic, um, so you're going to need to make sure you stay on top of it. We'll take our time, but it's still going to be pretty challenging. Hang in there, everybody.